All right, uh, I am back with warm up video number two. If you're a doubler, that is super awesome for you today because you get two warm up videos. So I just filmed doing the clarinet warm up video. And for those who are watching later, we are live in the Facebook group Woodwind Support Community to do some live warming up for our uh, community members. And I'm going to be showing what I do for my saxophone warm up. So um, at this point, my neighbors probably know that I'm warming up. <laughs> And the saxophone is going to be quite loud. Um, so, um, I was just talking about what I'm thinking about in my warm up. So, the point of the warm up is tone, technique, consistency with the embouchure, sound, and just general proficiency, feeling good at your instrument. Okay, so now that I've <laughs> drank my coffee, I'm ready to go. Um, I'm very sorry for my repair person who might be watching the warm up. It's not good to drink coffee with creamer and play an instrument. Okay. So, I am going to be doing a very similar thing that I did with my clarinet warm up, but uh, slightly different. Okay. So, I am going to just play a note on my saxophone and just see how it sounds. <laughs> practice sock so if I'm playing in my apartment a lot and it gets too loud especially late at night um, this is called the cheap mute I will put that in my bell and that will make the sound a little bit more muffled <laughs> makes the low notes a little bit funky but uh, that is an option okay so here we go so I got my note going <laughs> So um, what I like to do is a chromatic scale or I can do a major scale. Um, for this, I'm going to be doing a major scale. Um, I'll show you why in a second. So on saxophone, it's a little bit hard to start right on the lowest note of the horn, right? Which is our B flat. Okay, that's like kind of hard to just get a really good sound right away. Um, so I'll actually practice going down from it from another note. Um, so I'm gonna be doing my B flat major scale and first, I'm going to make sure that I get, I'm getting a really nice sound on the note B flat. And you can do any easy major scale. You can do a chromatic scale. This is just what I'm doing, and this is the things that I do to warm up. So this is kind of just an inside look into what I actually do. Okay, so I'm going to try to get a really nice note on the B flat on my saxophone. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to be playing the overtone. So this is kind of a more advanced concept. Feel free to skip this. But I'm going to be fingering a low B flat, and I'm going to try to get the sound of the B flat an octave above. So, so you can make sure I'm not cheating. So that's an overtone, and that's a super nice resonant note on saxophone. So that's how I make sure that I'm getting a really nice open and resonant sound. So I'll kind of go back and forth between that. I'm trying to transfer the sound of that overtone into the... Uh, regular B flat and then when I feel like I'm ready on that I'm gonna take that side key B flat and go down the B flat major scale so I was just doing some nice slow half notes there you can do that with the metronome or without and then next, I'm gonna go up. So this is where, uh, into my upper range that I really wanna make sure I'm playing with a nice open and resonant sound. Play that overtone again to remember the sound.
And I'm really thinking is keeping a nice ah feeling in my throat. I'm making sure not to pinch on that upper octave, right? Um, we all know that kind of squeaky saxophone sound, right? Ugh, that we try to avoid up there. Um, so that's really why I focus on making it nice and resonant. Um, some of those notes sounded like they could be a little bit more consistent. So I might go back and individually work on those. It's also a time where I kind of check my read setup. Um, this reads okay. Um, I have my little uh, read toolkit. Um, I talk about kind of how I work on reads in a read video. It's also on YouTube. So I might say on my read. Um, so now I'm going to be doing uh, some scales and articulation things. So primarily what I'm warming up right now is um, I'm kind of doing more of a jazz warm up routine, but it's going to apply to whatever genre of music you're doing, right? Scales, articulation. So I'm going to be working on my major scales, but I'm going to be doing them in two, five, one patterns. So what's that? Um, <laughs> it's, if you don't know what that is, that's okay. But basically I'm doing some different modes uh, of the major scale. So I'm going to be doing... Dorian, Mixolydian, and then a major scale. Um, if that is something that you're not familiar with, feel free to just do a major scale. But that's just what I'm doing in my warm up. I'm showing you the real live, <laughs> the real live warm up. Um, so I will be doing that in all 12 keys. So uh, my 251 pattern will sound something like this. <laughs> So what I'll usually do is um, I might put on a backing track to play along with uh, that has some chords, but for right now, um, I'm just going to put on my metronome. Okay, so here's my metronome, and I'm going to have it on, this is on the offbeat. I'm going to do it in swing, so it'll be like... So that's a two five one in the key of C. Um, I'm gonna do a couple of those. I'm not gonna go through all twelve keys, but this is just how I'd warm up. All the 12 keys in so usually I warm up with something called the I real pro which is just like a track you can also find let me turn that off you can find some backing tracks on YouTube um, and stuff like that uh, we do a different way of doing that warm-up so uh, that's something that's kind of easy for me now at this point so what I do next is I kind of add in some different variations uh, let me see if I can get out my little, I'm kind of like looking at my computer for some of these warm-ups. Um, so I'm kind of looking in two places. Okay, so now that that's kind of easy starting from the root of the scale, um, I'll probably do something where I start from uh, a different part. So maybe I'd want to start on the seventh and do these like with my iReal backing track. I'm actually going to put it on so you can hear how that sounds. Um, yeah, so for for the warm up, it's kind of interpretive what you want to do. I usually think like, what do I most want to work on? So if you're just learning your scales, if you're learning about what a two five one pattern is, you could do that. For me personally, what I'm working on is starting from different points of the scale. Um, so something that I'm working on is like I will start on the seventh or the ninth, doing stuff like that. So um, I practice my little two five one with my iReal Pro, and it would sound. Um, kind of something like this. Uh, so. And then if I was doing circle of fifths, so then we could move up to the G minor. So I just keep doing that. Um, straight or swung. And again, you can do that with a backing track or a metronome. Um, 
the easy version of this is if you're just trying to get familiar with your major scales, you can just do all your major scales. Um, and you know, you can go chromatically or circle of fists, which means you'd be moving in different intervals. So something like this. Um, I'll start with my B flat major and I'll just kind of practice circle of fifths going around. <laughs> I'm trying to use my full range so I'm going up past the scale and I'm trying to work on connecting the upper register so obviously with that one when I was going between the E flat F and G it wasn't completely clean so it's okay to not be sounding perfect during your warm-up it actually shouldn't sound perfect and I think that's why a lot of people don't make warm-up videos because you're kind of sounding bad it's really important that you're working on your weaknesses so that when you're actually playing music that you know how to sound good so your warm-up routine shouldn't be like oh yeah I'm gonna record this this is the most awesome jazz solo ever no it should be sounding um, it should be sounding bad like you should be working on things that are hard for you um, so I would isolate that okay yeah doing that kind of palm key stuff to work on my altissimo and then again I could keep doing the major scales the A flat the D flat and again I'm gonna keep working that up to the full point of my range like past the high G so yeah, it's gonna, <laughs> there's gonna be some squeaks, there's gonna be some finger mistakes, that's cool. That's something that I'm trying to work on. Um, so it's not gonna be a perfect, amazing sounding warm-up routine. So I think that's a misconception that people have about warm-ups. Okay, I feel like I gave you like four ideas <laughs> of scale things to work on. So just pick what works from that from uh, for you. The other thing that I will do is articulation. So I'm trying to work on jazz articulation, getting that faster. So I will take one of those scales um, and I can either do a jazz etude or sometimes I'll also read through a solo trans transcription, but I'll try to see if I can kind of get some of those scales at, or, at a faster tempo um, with jazz articulation, which is a little bit different than classical articulation. So. so in the beginning I was doing some scales like, um, let me play that again. Okay. So I'm doing a swing rhythm and uh, I'm gradually going to up the tempo. So I'm just doing um, like a D Dorian. Um, I'll just do a C major to make it simple. So this is quarter note equals 100 and I'm going to see how fast I can get my articulation. Okay, that's pretty good. And obviously I'm trying to get it really smooth for my jazz articulation. I don't want it sounding like... Right? We don't want that. <laughs> so let me bring it up to 120. Okay. Okay, that's sounding pretty good. So kind of like the clarinet, I'll just work up until where it starts sounding bad. <laughs> that's kind of... So this is 130 now. Okay, that was pretty good. It, it was getting a little bit flubby up in there. Um, maybe I'll put it even on, so now I'll put it on 70 so that it's like. <laughs> At some point, you know, I'm going to be adding more slurs. Right, you can't tongue that fast. Um, maybe you can. So that's how I'd kind of work on those articulations. And I'm trying to relate my warm up to what I'm practicing. So for example, if I'm transcribing, like, um, I was transcribing a Sonny Stitt solo in something, he obviously has amazing fast lines and articulations. So this is kind of directly relating to what I'm trying to do in math. I'm trying to work on my altissimo. So I'll practice my skills full range so that I can be more proficient on that. Some other things I might incorporate into my warm-up routine, especially when I'm doing more jazz-focused things, I'll be doing some ear training exercises, so hearing different chords. Um, I'll be picking specific solos, specific, obviously I'll be incorporating improvisation and tune practice um, into my practice routine, but this is kind of the warm-up portion of this. Okay, 
Um, so hopefully that was an information overload. Uh, next time I do a video, I'll kind of do less talking and more playing. But um, as you can see, I was kind of working on some really important facets of playing. So again, we did tone, articulation, um, intonation, sound, speed. So those are some things um, to think about. So again, this is live in our great woodwind support community. And Amanda and I talk about more of all these warm ups and give you specific exercises and feedback on your plane and warm up routine and anything else that you need in our program, Virtual Woodwind Academy. So, if you're interested in getting more depth into this stuff and feeling like you really know how to do a practice routine, a warm up routine, that might be an option that you can think about. But I hope this was helpful and I'm happy to make more of these videos if people enjoy them. So, I hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching. Bye.